So my name is Jose Muñoz. I am the, the Android technical lead uh, and I'm going to introduce to you like uh, what is the Android SDK, what we have so far and what is coming in the in the in the coming future. Okay. So um what the, the Android SDK, what it is, sorry. It's um it's basically a, a common good that allows for any Android applications to work offline as it has an internal database. Um, it supports the communication with the access to instances uh, and facilitates the development of Android applications with sharing some libraries and codes. Um, so basically, we said that, uh, that the access to is not only a web application, but it's a platform that has a, a, a public API. Okay? And then uh, we have the Android SDK uh, that is being implemented by the UIO uh, Android official application. Okay, and the communication happens all the time uh, between the, the Android SDK and the API. So the Android application never goes to the server, never contacts the server, but it always does with the, with the SDK. Okay, this is one of the goals. Another goal is like allowing the dev community to, uh, to use the Android SDK in order to build their own like custom Android uh, applications. Um, so this is quite a new product, I would say. Um, the first release has been published in the, in December 2019, uh, the 1.0, and then like let's say like every four months, uh, we are publishing a new version in April 2020 1.1, August uh, 1.2, we also had a patch release. Patch release means that there is a new version which doesn't contain new features, but mainly uh, back fixing and some improvements there. And the current version that is out there is 1.3. This one is being also uh, implemented now by the by the Android, the current Android application 2.3, and it's compatible with uh, 2.35. Okay, the access to 2.35. And also in February we have released like a week ago the the 1.31 version that is basically 1.3 with some back fixing. And the good news is like in April, we are going to have a new one that is 1.4, okay? Uh, this is going to be used by the current, sorry, the new uh, Android application that is going to be published as well in, in, in April. And of course, compatible with 2.36, okay? So uh, basically we are moving from a four month cycle to a six month cycle. So this means that um, uh, we are uh, the same as the DHS2 core, right? So we are trying always to be like in sync with the DHS2 core uh, and, you know, making for the users that are the developers that are using the SDK fully compatible with the newest DHS2 version, okay? So next one in April and next one, 1 1.5 will probably, will be published in, in October when 2.37 will be released. So what the SDK contains starting from 1.0, uh, I'm going to go a bit fast with this part, uh, but, but mainly does, well, does many things, but uh, uh, the metadata thing, uh, so it downloads all the, all the necessary parts of the DHS2 data model, like the programs, data sets, or units, in order to render entry forms uh, to work, to, to let the app to work in offline mode, okay? And, um, so it also downloads and synchronizes the data, of course, uh, data sync that goes in both sides, downloads data and upload data as well. And of course, as the, the size of the database, the local database of Android is, uh, is more limited than the one that we can have in the server. So we have some parameters here in order to play with a little bit with different options, okay? So the most important one is the total number of TIs or events that we can download from the server. This number can be global or it can be like linked to a particular unit or a particular program. So maybe you want to download like, I don't know, 200 TIs for a malaria program and then you can download like 400 TIs for an HIV program. Also, as we are going to discuss in a moment, uh, we, we also have the, uh, what we call the Android Settings Web App uh, for fine tuning uh, different parameters for the synchronization. We're going to see this in a, in a, in a moment. Um, so metadata sync, data sync, and, and also, uh, of course, we have a, lot of, a database, uh, and then if people, if the developers, they need to retrieve the data, they don't need to know, like, 
uh, or to build like complex SQL sentences, uh, or they, they don't need to know the, the, the database schema because already it contains more than 100 tables, so it, can, it, it is quite complex. But we have a, a data access layer that uh, encapsulates all this complexity for you. Okay, so basically it's like an Ibernate layer that uh, using programming, uh, you can like get uh, the information that you need, okay, quite easily. Um, then, it's really important support for last DHS2 versions. Uh, at the very minimum, we always guarantee the compatibility with the DHS2 current version and two previous versions. Uh, but certainly, we're trying to do this with as many versions as we can. So, for instance, the first version, 1.0, as you have here, it was compatible from DHS2 to 229 to 233. This means uh, five DHS versions. And the current one is compatible from 230 to 235, six versions. And when we synchronize, when the SDK synchronize, it automatically detects the DHS2 versions, the core DHS2 version that is like syncing to or from. Um, so this is uh, challenging, but I think that we have now like a good foundation to continue providing like a support for many versions. And in this case, we're talking six versions that is more or less like two years and a half of having compatibility with uh, different two DHS2 core versions, okay? And what else? Something that is really important, error management, especially when you are syncing data. So as you know, you are developers, so uh, most of you are developers, so you probably know this. There are there may be some issues with the conflicts that the server may have may have you when you are synchronizing data. And here we have uh, managing the granularity, the error granularity at different levels. It can be an error at the TI level, event, enrollment, or attribute or a conflict in a particular data element, okay? So all this is like a retrieved API and it's stored in, in, in the SDK. So in a way that, that you can, the Android develop, the, the Android, the SDK user can decide how to present that information to the, to the end users. I think that that one is particularly important. Integrity check, yeah, sometimes the API delivers data uh, with missing dependencies, like for example, a data value with, uh, is not linked to data element. Or I can think of as well a program rule variable that is not linked to a to a particular to a data element or a, or an attribute. Okay, so all these missing dependencies we are managing them in the SDK and we're removing all the errors that we may have from the from the from the API. Uh, online search whenever you have whenever your device is in, uh, online connected with the internet we also um, we also allow the online search. In this case we are taking the on the the the, unit, the, the search of unit three for allowing to, to, to do this kind of operations, okay? Um, to separate the unique attributes, if you are, if you, if the Android user is going to be offline for a couple of days, a couple of weeks, we are like storing unique attributes as well in the, in the local database. So you don't need to call the API anytime you need it, but you can retrieve all this data that is already stored in the, in the database. Um, database migration is really important. When you are moving from one version to other version, you are not losing data, okay? Because this migration ensures that they are compatible, the, data, the database scheme is going to upgrade to, the, to a new version, okay? And it works from any version to any version, okay? So in this case, it works from the example here is someone wants to like operate from 110 to 130, it is fine. So if you are building your custom applications and you want to upgrade and you are worried about losing your data when with that's the upgrade, uh, I think that this is a good reason to use the to use the SDK. Okay. And what else? Now this is quite new. Uh, from one one, we are also allowing the synchronization using SMS. In the case that you don't have internet, you can use the SMS to sync the IS events and aggregated values. We are using a compression library that is being shared by the by the um, by the DHS2 core as well. Uh, Android settings app compatible. As I said before, this is this has been released. This app it has been is in the app hub. Uh, it has been released in October last year. And then here you can define the different parameters for synchronization. And then something very important: if you want to encrypt the the your uh, database of your Android devices. Okay, so imagine that you are, for example, like, uh, like I mean, there are some programs that are more critical than others. I can think on it, of HIV, for example. Uh, so you may need to encrypt that information. So now you can do it. 
Okay, you can do it. We are using an open source, an extension of uh, what we call a, of extension of SQLit that is called a SQL Cipher, and it has like a, a performance issue of five fifty percent of overhead because then, of course, when you are accessing the data, you have to unencrypt the information, but at the end, it's something that is for you here for the community. If, if you have to manage very critical data, very sensitive data, you can encrypt now the local database if you like. Important shared expression parser. Uh, we are like a sh uh, this parser is ANTLR, it's a grammar that is being shared uh, between uh, Android and the core and the DHS2 core. So this means that the, all the expressions with program indicators are going to be the same. In fact, since 1.1 one, one and 1.2, one, we are like supporting most of the program, most of the program indicators variables, most of the DHS2 functions. Okay. And so if you can define any complex expression in a program indicator that the SDK can handle it and can return a value, okay? Because basically we are using the same parser. Uh, validation is, and it's the same with the validation rules, okay? Uh, in this case, they are only working at a data set level, but uh, you can trigger a, a, an exception, an error, if, if a validation rule is not, it, it is, if it delivers a false value, okay? And what else? Utility classes, uh, very important as well. This is coming from 1.3 and it's an ongoing process. Uh, DHS2 may have some kind of logic that is a bit complicated. So before 1.3, this, all this logic was uh, in the app, but now we are like moving more and more of the logic, the DHS2 logic to the SDK. So for example, I can think of uh, uh, when you have to um, uh, add an event or modify an event, and then you have all these logics that uh, based on enrollment and the status or the completion on the completion date, all this logic that can be a bit complicated, it can like uh, be automatically done with the, if you are using the SDK. The same with write and write sharing access. Okay, you may have like access, read access to a to a resource, but not a write access to all these complexities being managed by the by the SDK as well. So just like a quick summary, it's a common digital good. It accelerates the development of the access to offline integrated apps. So use it. Uh, it's the usage for Android developers. It's written in Java and Kotlin. Uh, uses SQL Lit and as the database. And it's a group effort. That's important. We are not working isolated. We're working together with the DHS2 backend team in order to identify what is the most uh, useful endpoints, how we can like be sure that we are like letting the users, letting the Android SDK users and the app users to use the most efficient calls. Uh, with the API, okay? So this is a group effort. Um, okay, so this is the SDK, what we have now. And then let me introduce that this, this is not part of the of the Android SDK stack, but it's important as well to mention. Uh, as I said before, since October 2020, we have something that we call the Android Settings Web App uh, that you can download from the from the app, the access to app GitHub, okay? And this has this layout. And basically what this uh, web app does is the, the it defines like uh, different operation features, right? So in this app, as I said before, you can define if the, the uh, if you want all the Android device to have a, an, a database that, you, that is encrypted. In this settings web app, you specify if you want the, the SMS settings in the case, you are afraid of not having internet connections and then you need to synchronize using SMS. You can define the metadata thing. How, how often are you going to do the metadata refresh? Like it can be every day, every every week, every every hour, for example. And the data sync, in this case, how often as well, but also how much data, okay? We can have, a, you know, you can specify, I would like to, for a particular program, I would like to download 200 TIs and for other program, I would like to download 300, for example. And then all this uh, all this configuration is also being stored in the uh, in the SDK. Okay, so I think that is also very interesting in order to have more flexibility, allowing more flexibility in how the users can synchronize with a with a server instance. And what is coming now, uh, we are going to have so to to publish a new version of the Android Settings Web App to be released in in April 2021. Okay. That it, it will have a new layout, but also it will allow the user to to define like uh, other uh, uh, layouts for the for the Android app, for like home screen or programs and datasets. How many filters do the user want to show them? Sorry, can the apps show in the in in these screens? Like for example, in programs you are really interested in not units or in periods. Okay, you can select that in the filter here in this application. Okay, so I think that this 
will also create some uh, flexibility in how different filters are being rendered in the in the Android applications. And then analytics. This is has been already quite a lot of demanded by the by the by the community having analytics that works in Android and works offline. Okay. okay. So now with the uh, Android settings web app, you can define this. Uh, in the TI scope, okay, enrollment scope. So basically, we can define like a bar charts, line charts, pivot tables. What are the data elements that, would, that you would like to show, or the attributes that you would like to show in bar charts or, in char or program indicators in this kind of uh, items? Okay, and I'm telling you this because this is being defined in the in the address settings web app, but then it's being consumed in the in the with from the SDK. Okay, so this is what the roadmap. This is what we are going to have in two months. Okay, starting by uh, local analytics. Okay, so local analytics, they are going to be able, the, the, the SDK is going to be able to, 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 to store some configuration for performing local analytics in 1.4, coming up in April 2021. Okay, in this case, what the SDK does is reading all the configuration that has been stored in the, in the using the Android settings web app, it's being stored on the configuration in the server. Okay, and here you have some examples. This is something that is already happening in our tests. Okay, in which we are showing here like some program indicators with some values. We are showing here some charts. Okay, and the SDK, what it does is like it calculates all these values over here, but also stores the information how, about how to render different items. So in this case, we are rendering this as a line chart. So all this configuration is being stored in the SDK. And the SDK know how to plot uh, these points over here. Okay. So all this information is being stored in the in the SDK. So uh, that I think this has been challenging, but it's going to be there in April 2021. Uh, also calculations across the TI's and events. Uh, now it's going to be only again the scope is ATI, but then in one five that is going to be probably released in October 2021. We we want to allow also calculations across the TI's and events. Okay. One thing that is also there is that a set indicators uh, is coming up in 1.4 now in April 2021 and uh, you know with all the values of uh, an indicator that is linked to a, to a data set. Um, utility, logic, method, classes, it's an ongoing process. Uh, we are moving more and more and more logic to the SDK to, in order to validate data entry. One thing that we believe can be interesting is like also offering some kind of ping services in order to let the uh, other application know if the if the if a particular server is up and running or not. Okay, so we also can uh, plan to have these ones here. Breaking the glass. This is not currently supported in one three. It's going to be supported in the next two months. Uh, working list. Also very. It was very demanded by the community. Um, in one dot four, we are going to be supported this one for both event working list and track identity instances basis working list. Okay, and we have an example here. Okay, in this case, the working list, you know, that they are a working list at the end is a filter, like a filter that has been defined and stored in the in the in the server side. Okay, so here we are downloading those filters and storing them in the SDK, so then the, the app can can render them. So in this case, we can see that there are like three working list over here with the APIs. This is for a malaria program, and maybe you would like to have a filter, a working list that is cases that has not been yet assigned, or events as, or, or I would like to like filter by the events that has been assigned to my user, and so forth and so forth. Okay, so coming up in, in April 20, 2021, authentication, also we have, uh, uh, has been very demanded by the community. Not only now, we are only uh, allowing like um, uh, basic authentication, but we're going to allow OAuth, and if we can, we are working on the backend to activity with the backend team to achieve this also open ID. Okay. Uh, what is more things that are in the roadmap, multi, but not for now, maybe this one for the multi user, multi server, this more for the last milestone of the, sorry, last mile of the 2021, or maybe the beginning of 2022. Like when you want, so there are some requirements from the community they were saying that, okay, there may be like a three, two users that are working at the same health facility and they want to share the device without, you know, logging themselves but without uh, deleting the, the database, okay? We are planning to that to this as well, uh, probably at the end of this year, beginning of next year, okay? And then the same with, uh, with, dif with, with different servers. So if you are a user, and this happens more and more in different use cases. You have like a server that is to store tracker data and a server that is to store um, 
aggregated data, okay? But then there is one other application that is one user, and then with the same application, you will like to have access to both without removing your database, okay? This is also going to be possible. We plan to do that hopefully by the end of this year. Uh, more things, satellite in the roadmap, widget UI components. Uh, in this case, everything now is integrated in the app. But now we are planning to have all the widget UI or the, sorry, all the widgets and the UI components separated in a module. So this can be reused by other uh, Android custom applications. So then it means that many of the Android application that uh, implements the SDK, they can have the same or less uh, look and feel. Okay, I can think, for example, in the unit tree, this can be reused, or any data element or attribute type, or even the render, the different rendering types that we have in the application, like checkbox or, or write the buttons or whatsoever. Uh, uh, last, uh, what also we have is the metadata granular sync. Right now, we have data can be granular, uh, so you can say, as I said before, I want to download 100 events from this program and 50 for this other program but the metadata, you download everything, right? So there may be some use cases that you maybe need to like download all the metadata, the configuration for a particular health area, but you don't care too much about others. That is something that uh, we plan to do as well, but it's in 2022. And then something that uh, kind of a uh, proof of concept, let's see how it goes, like having the app only working online, okay? In mind that you have, that you are in a, I don't know, can be an hospital with a local network, and then you don't have like a, constraints regarding the bandwidth and you can be online, which means all the time, which means that the, the synchronization in both ways will happen in real time, okay? And instead of like storing in the database and then sending the data to your server, when it's like uh, uh, configured in the in, 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 in the DFTS2 instance, okay? So um, this is what we have in the, in the roadmap. And I think, I don't know if I can use two more minutes. Uh, I just want to go very fast for with the resources we have. Okay, so we have an skeleton app. Okay, so how you can start to build your own uh, custom applications? You don't need to start from the blank activity because it's, it can be a bit overwhelmed. So for that we have for, for that purpose we, we we have created what we call the skeleton app that can be your entry point. Okay, it's a very a very basic application but already has all the uh, is connected to the SDK. It implements the SDK as well. Okay. So you have the GitHub link here, okay? This is the code. And then it basically contains, it has a master branch that is a basic project. It's just use the SDK and only for login and download the metadata and data, okay? It only does that. But then we, can, we have a use cases branches that is more, more advanced. And then you have like a here, like data entry forms with program rules. Data entry forms can be for programs or can be for data sets. And you will see how you can build your own data entry forms using this skeleton map. Okay, so you can reuse as much as many code as many code as you as you need, but then at least at the very least you will have an example about uh, uh, with how you can do it. Okay, and I'm finishing with the, the resources are here. This link with the with the source code, the documentation, where the skeleton, Jira, a link to the community. You have new ideas. If you if you if you are telling us that you need something for for your project, just please write to the community. We'd like to have message in uh, in the community. Eh? So don't hes hesitate to write here. And like a final summary. So basically, if you want your app to work offline, that is a really big undertaking. If you want the app, the, your Android custom app, to be compatible with many DHS2 versions, and as I said, we are supporting right now like six different DHS2 versions. It's two years and a half of DHS2 compatibility. Uh, automatically upgrade to the new SDK version, have the best performance synced with, with, a, with a DHS2 server. Okay, uh, because many people are, okay, I am having a custom application, but then I have some issues when synchronizing with the server. Okay, if you have those issues, it also if you like to simplify uh, the error management returned by the API, that can be challenged as well if you are like uh, using directly the API. Okay, if you need, or if you want to have the best support from the Android team, okay, because it's something that we are like working on this every day. Okay, and many more features like program indicators and validation rules. So if you ask for your, if you need, if you're in a project, you need to build a custom application and you are interested in this, please use SDK, do it. Because it may take an effort at the beginning. You, you need to learn how it works. You need to know a bit how it, you can use the data access layer, but at the end, at the very end, it will save you a lot of time. And you will have a, an, an application that is going to maintainable for years, okay? 
So yeah, I think that's all from my side. 